Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, pretty great stuff. First up, Bitcoin has these lessons to learn from Tesla, Netflix, and Amazon. And I love these types of articles because it takes a look at where are we going. To do that, we need to look at what's going on in the past, right now, and potentially one, three, five, and even ten years into the future. Also, we had a little bit of a run-up, but the Bitcoin rally could be on pause as Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi rejects President of the United States Donald Trump's $1.8 trillion stimulus proposal. And I believe this could put a monkey wrench in our little mini bull run. And finally, Labs DeFi is the first DeFi real estate crowdfunding platform. When I first saw this, I thought I was pretty excited about it. Then I read into it, I thought to myself, this is potentially the most dangerous way to use DeFi, and I can only see bad things initially. And we'll go over all that, but first take a look what's going on in the market. So today, it is October 11th, it is uh, 12.30 Texas time, and it's a beautiful Sunday. About 86 degrees here in El Paso, Texas, cannot beat the weather. So what do we got today? So we do have a little bit of a rally, which is not too bad. Bitcoin's at 11.4, and uh, it uh, did pretty well. It was, it was just below 10.9, then all of a sudden 11.2, 11.3, 11.4. I think it went up to almost 11.5, but a little bit of a retracement. But it is up 8% in one week, so you cannot beat that for Bitcoin. 0.7 for 24 hours, we'll take it. Ethereum up to uh, 375, that's up 0.5. Again, 8.5% for the week. And I was on Alex Maschioli's show when there was uh, two, two traders that were there from uh, uh, Market Rebellion, CJ and Monty. And they said, oh yeah, Ethereum's got a lot of room to run. This one was like at 343, 345. They said, it's got a lot of room to run. It'll hit around 380 and it'll probably come back down. And I'm like, these guys, again, they don't, they don't know what they're talking about. And of course, here we are, and I am wrong, again, they were the exact same ones that I actually called Chainlink to go down to 1050, when it hit 18 bucks, and uh, <laughs> look where it's at right now. Anyhow, Tether's Tether, XRP is at a whopping 25 cents, watch out. Bitcoin Cash up 0 0.8, Binance Coin 1.8, 1.0, uh, Chainlink we talked about, 4%, 20, almost 20% 20 in one week. So congratulations to all the Chainlink holders. That's pretty darn good. If you get a chance after this video, take a look at Crypto Nobs. He did a uh, live premiere about an hour ago, and there is a fantastic two minute video clip where he talks about Chainlink, the different integrations that are, they're doing with Swift, and the proof that states why this is actually going on. And it was fascinating. So check out CryptoNobes. He's in my every one of my descriptions of uh, one of the YouTubers that I actually recommend. Good stuff. It's like uh, listening to Downtown Abbey because he's from the UK. And he's got that nice, uh, you know, English droll type of uh, accent and uh, kind of soothing. Anyhow, Polkadot, down 0.2%, but still above four bucks. Pretty happy. Cardano, Litecoin, let's see, what is it? Fat Monero up 6%. That's pretty good for you privacy coin holders. 15% uh, up for Cosmos, so uh, looks like a little pump for interoperability. And 7% for IOTA. I think it was a new partnership that was just announced, so great for you guys. Zcash up 12%, almost 20% for the week. I think people are starting to realize that, hey, uh, Gemini got the uh, green light from the uh, New York Commission. Uh, they actually went through the entire uh, process to go through the financial institution to say, hey, we would like to have Zcash uh, be able to have the functionality of shielded and private transactions. So right now you can do that. You can do that on Gemini. You can send Zcash to anybody you want to, in any amount, and they can do whatever they want with it uh, because we're going to send it to it, and it can't be tracked. And you just put it on, and that's it. So this was a huge win I felt for privacy coins, and I think people are just really saying like, "Hey, that's pretty great," and we want to get in on that. Dash up 5%, Uniswap, hey, Uniswap almost, uh, hopefully it's, it's at $4 mark at 3%, like to see that. You're in finance up 5%, sure. And uh, what else, anything great? Ooh, REN, 17%, congratulations REN holders. Don't have that, well, don't really know about it, need to learn about that. Anyhow, that's what's going on in the market. Let's jump in today and see what's going on. So first up, fascinating article, Bitcoin has these lessons learned from Tesla, Netflix, and Amazon. So we don't know where we're going until we look at where we've been. And there's a great example looking at tech stocks back in the day. So what's this all about? Well, technology stocks of which Sun Microsystems, you don't know Sun, they merged with Oracle about 2010. They're all about database software and they are huge. So this is back in the day. So Sun Microsystems, Intel, Apple, and Microsoft were the pioneers because they began in much of the same way as Bitcoin did, uh, creating hype, driving up their price, having high volatility in its early days, but they were cast out by the larger market and eventually turned into the investment of the decade. So you have to remember back in the day, early 2000s, late 90s, 
Um, when these stocks came about, everybody would look at that, and if you invest in those, you were an idiot. You were a fool. You were chasing fool's gold, and you had no idea what you were doing, and that was not how an investor would spend his money on these ridiculous tech stocks. But uh, who's laughing now, Jack? And here we are. Uh, we just take a look at all these different uh, stock prices. So remember this, especially when people start to talk about, well, didn't didn't Bitcoin used to be twenty thousand dollars? Well, yeah, it used to be twenty thousand, but it also used to be called it used to be a, about a dime. So um, it's still doing pretty great. Also, start to talk about Amazon. Look, Amazon at one point was down ninety four percent from its all time high at one uh, at uh, one segment in history. And when you invested in Amazon, people looked at you like you were just just the dumbest because they're like, why would anybody shop online? That's so stupid. We can go. I can go get milk at the grocery store. I can go get tires from the tire store. I can go get anything I want to from Walmart. Uh, I can get everything. And I it only just I go down the street, I pick it up, and I come home. Nobody's going to shop online. That is so dumb. Here we are. Same thing with Bitcoin. Look at Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin at point, one point was down 85% from its all-time high. And now it's uh, we're looking at 11.5, eyeing 12K. This could be a great year uh, coming up 2021, and I think it's going to be a breakout season. Netflix, again, 82% from its all-time high. And people, again, I remember when Blockbuster was a thing. I used to go on the store with my parents, and we'd pick up a VHS tape. That's right, I'm old, VHS tape. And we'd, we'd bring it home, we'd plug it in the VCR, watch the movie, and then, of course, we'd always have to say, hey, we got to return this within three days. We don't want to get dinged because you'd have these things called late charges. Well, guess what? There's no late charges on Netflix because you just stream everything. It's awesome. And when Netflix came about, people were like, who was going to do that? I mean, the buffering is so awful. You can't watch a whole movie. It's very glitchy. That's that's dumb. You're stupid. Why did you, first of all, why didn't we invest in that? Why didn't we, you know, uh, buy it? And now here we are. And then Tesla, same type of thing. Why did anybody get an electric car? That's dumb. We have uh, these gas guzzlers that work fantastic, and we'll never run out of gas, right? <laughs> so it's all the same thing. It's all just going in a big, huge cycle, and that's pretty much the, one of the reasons why I invest in Bitcoin because I see where the whole uh, game is going. Anyhow, moving on, and it goes down to facts, but I just want to show you this. This is this is the actual original article, and here's the facts. Amazon has grown exponentially, and it's been it's up a thousand x since its IPO. Netflix is on its way to grow to a thousand x, and Tesla is uh, about a hundred x. So, when people talk about why you invest in Bitcoin, well, and cryptocurrency digital assets, it's because it's an asymmetrical investment. Right, like if you put a thousand bucks in, you could lose a thousand bucks. I don't personally think you're going to, but you could put a thousand in and lose it all, and you, you lost a thousand. But guess what? It could 10x, it could 20x, 30x. The gains that you could potentially get on just Bitcoin are massive. And then look at look at Ethereum. For Ethereum to get back to its original all time high, it was around thirteen hundred dollars. So we're at around what? 350, we'll just say 350 for round numbers, right? So that's, you could 4X just to get back to its all-time high. Bitcoin, it's like you 2X. So if you look at where Ethereum's going, look at where Cardano's going, look at where all the different, I mean, just, it doesn't matter what you're talking about. There's a massive upside potential. So why wouldn't you just put some money into it and then just say, well, if I lose it all, I lose it all. But I mean, on the other, on the flip side, I got a lot to gain. So there's a couple more things I want to show out. When people talk about uh, instability, uh, it's it's so volatile. Same thing with tech stocks. Look at Amazon back in the day. Jeez. Bitcoin, yes, it is. Netflix was massively volatile. And Tesla, same type of thing. And then if you take a look at, this is this was a good one. I like this one. It, it talks about if you could take market cap of each uh, of these industries, uh, this is what one Bitcoin would be worth. So Ethereum right now, its market cap is... Ethereum is at 42 billion market cap. So at 42 billion, you're looking at 2,600 Bitcoin. Uh, if you hit the market cap of Jeff Bezos, which apparently is probably around 300 something billion, then Bitcoin's at 10.2. Uh, Bitcoin says it's at 12.2, but this is an old one. Uh, JP Morgan, uh, we've already passed them before in 2017, but their market cap is much higher than that. That was at 16.5. Uh, Visa. Uh, when we were at eight, when, when the market was around 600, 700 billion, that was roughly what Visa was at. Facebook, somewhere around 800, 900 billion. That, that means that Bitcoin would be at 40. If it hits Apple's market cap, which is around 1 trillion, then Bitcoin would be at 106,000. And if it hits the market cap of gold, meaning it takes the entire gold industry over, you're looking at 
487,000. So what is that all about? Well, I just want to show you, and I've, I've shown this many a time, but I always like to, to come back to it to people who are new to the channel. This is from May 27, 2020. This is all the world's money and markets in one quick visualization. So this little square right here is 100 billion. That's all, the, silver has about, well, about 50 billion, okay? All the cryptocurrency, around 244, it's actually now 360. Uh, that's what it's all about. Just these little squares. Here's all military spending, and that's China, America, and everybody else. This is all the military spending. Here's the budget deficit, coins and banknotes, Fed's balance sheet, which I gotta tell you is probably way higher now. Here's all the billionaires. This is how much they're worth. Uh, eight trillion dollars. All these guys. Gold. Gold is worth around eleven trillion dollars. So at eleven trillion, that's how much Bitcoin will be worth. It'll be worth about half a million dollars or four hundred eighty thousand dollars, whatever it was. Here's all the Fortune 500 countries or companies. Here's Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, uh, everything that uh, really makes up like 25% of the S&P 500 is right here. Stock markets, here's all the money in the stocks. Uh, money supply, which most of that I will add, 7% is only physical, 93% is just zeros and ones on a digital ledger, just so you know. Global debt, it says 253 trillion, but it's way higher than that right now, especially with the US. Uh, global real estate, 280 trillion. We're gonna talk, cover that in a little bit. And then we've got global wealth. Look how much we have over here. 360 trillion in global wealth. And then these things called derivatives. Here's the gross market value, national value, or what we think it is, 558 trillion. But if we go for, farther, uh, this is what we think it could be, uh, just guessing. That's the high end estimate of one quadrillion. So we start to take a look at all the money that's out there. Uh, look at where Bitcoin is. Yeah, 211 billion. The potential for upside is massive. The only question is, when's it going to happen? And last up, I want to finish with this because it was a really great sentence. It says, the question remains, should you let these drawdowns get you down or should you just ignore them and continue buying as investors bought Amazon at a 94% discount? And that's the big thing. I am not a trader. I'm not in the TA. I'm not in swing trading. I'm not into any type of really trading uh, that I have to part with my investment. I'm just an investor and I dollar cost average. I put a little bit of money uh, sometimes every day into a project. Sometimes it's every week, but I will continue to buy in, especially right now. This is when all the money's made, when it's boring, when there's nothing going on, when it's down. And this is when people, and th th let me tell you right now, there are very few people that bought Amazon when it was 94% down because everybody looked at them and they probably heard from their families and everybody else out there like, you're dumb for doing that. Well, look, guess who's laughing now? And it's the same thing here. So the question is, what are you doing right now during these dips and these boring times? If you're like me, I'm buying. Let me know what you're doing in the comment section. Let's move on. Next up, these are going to go pretty fast because there's really not a story, but uh, it's just a little snippet. Pelosi rejects Trump's 1.8 trillion stimulus proposal. And if you're not from the United States, uh, there's a presidential election coming up in November and we're going to see who wins it. But uh, we're having a lot of problems here in the United States and we could use some relief. And the problem is, is that Democrats and Republicans are going to play political football and go back and forth. And Nancy Pelosi, Pelosi is the Speaker of the House. And the $1.8 trillion um, package was actually brought forth by Donald Trump and the Republicans. And she said, nope, I'm not going to accept it, which is kind of funny because Donald Trump, when he first of all, he has the coronavirus. And when he got out of the hospital, he says, well, uh, I'm not going to negotiate. So uh, I'm not going to do this until after the election. So tough luck, everybody. And then, of course, somebody got to him and he said, OK, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll, I'll negotiate. Nancy said, okay, well, I'm going to just reject everything. I do not, I'm going to tell you right now, I do not think a plan is going to be put into action. I do not think a bill is going to be passed until after the election. There's too much at stake. There's too much political football going on and that's what's going. And the only person right now in politics with the foresight and knowledge to actually give some great advice is Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang was he was going for the presidential nomination, didn't make it. Uh, he's a pretty smart guy, entrepreneur, and he was Bitcoin friendly. So I was really bummed out when he got uh, booted. But he says it like this, Nancy, take the deal. Put politics aside because people are hurting. Now, here's the thing. Uh, people in the stock market are hurting. People who are high net individuals, they're not hurting. They're actually doing better than what they were before. So people in the stock market are doing fantastic, but that's not the economy. The stock market, again, is rich people's feelings. And the people that are out here who have lost their jobs, who have lost businesses, who the small businesses are shutting down, their jobs aren't coming back. 
these are the people that need the stimulus. And I, for one, hopefully it will go through, but I don't think it's going to happen. What's that going to mean for the market? I see problems coming up, but I see uh, exponential growth in 2021. I've always said that. I don't care what's going to happen right now as far as like the volatility. To me personally, as far as cryptocurrency, I hope it goes down because guess what I'm going to do when it goes down? I'm going to buy a bunch more. And that's just how I see it. So all these things that are going on, don't be distracted from the real opportunity that's out there or the real uh, use case and what's going to happen with cryptocurrency digital assets. Look a year down the road. Look at five years. Look at 10 years. And that's where you want to go. Don't play the game. Don't be too short-sighted and go, oh, I just need this. If you're a trader, I understand. But uh, I'm talking to people who are investors like myself. So let me understand in the comment section. Last article. Next up, Labs DeFi, the first DeFi real estate crowdfunding platform. And again, when I see crowdfunding and I see real estate and all these things and, and uh, blockchain, I'm like, ooh, I get excited. But I was looking at this, I'm like, ooh, this is a bad idea. So what's going on here? So real estate investment management firm Labs has announced that the first DeFi real estate crowdfunding platform, dubbed the Labs DeFi, is in fact. The platform would be built in partnership with TRAMS Decentralized Exchange or Exchange's parent company, T8 Exchange, TTY Limited. Well, great. What the heck is that? So you can sum it up all right here. Using the TRAMS DEX financial tools, Labs aims to become the first DeFi real estate crowdfunding platform. The platform would operate on a liquidity pool model along with automated market maker protocols Users will be able to use their digital assets to indulge in the real estate digital market without having to deal with censorship. So that sounds great on the surface, but you have to remember, look what happened with Sushi. Look what happened with Yam. People lost a ton of money. And the real question is, who's behind this and who has access? And is it going to be like uh, the Master Chef where he just pulled the rug out from everybody? He's like, hey, I'm out of here. Thanks for all the Ethereum. And then off he went until people busted him and then he said oh hold on uh, i'll give this all back sorry for right now it could be a good experiment but i see massive massive problems i like decentralized finance do not get me wrong i think it's got a great place but for real estate to invest into real estate and to get into it i mean first of all who's going to put up the title where is that title stored if it's, if it's on the blockchain is it a smart contract who wrote the smart contract who's going to execute that who's going to make sure and actually go back and look at that smart contract and make sure that it'll execute correctly because again ton of problems could happen and uh i just don't see this as one of the answers before you run you got to walk so there's always going to be that um i will not invest into that until the, the bugs are are out uh, because i see a massive uh, potential of loss but i like where it's going just this isn't for me. However, talking about that, there's a, a company called Proppy uh, that I found out, and it is a real use case. It's using blockchain. And I actually I actually uh, messaged them. I said, hey, quick question, because you guys use the blockchain. Is it a centralized permission blockchain or is it decentralized? Uh, one like Ethereum. And they got back to me. And they said, hey, thanks for reaching out. Uh, they said, we create a blockchain entry for each document has been uploaded and signed on our platform. It's only used for document validation, doesn't contain any personal information. Our platform uses an ERC-20 smart contract recording data. So what is this company all about? Uh, this is all for real estate and closing the real estate deals and actually trying to eliminate the middleman. So when I saw this, I'm like, this looks pretty good. There's Michael Arrington uh, from TechCrunch. Uh, there's uh, some guy, there's Vitalik Buterin, there's the, the CEOs, and they got Tim Draper in here somewhere. Uh, but, but, yeah, there's Tim Draper right there. There's Grant Cardone. So, and there's Tim Draper again. So what they're all doing is they were real estate agents in, in LA and they wanted to make the closing of real estate faster, better, and put it on the blockchain. So if you ever close on a house or an apartment complex or, or if you've uh, refinanced or anything like that, you know, you got to sit down, you got to go through a ton of different documents and there's all these different origination, origination fees, title fees, and then it's got to be filed and everything. It's just a it's a real pain, actually. And uh, there's also a lot of problems with fraud uh, in the real estate business. So they're putting that all on the blockchain, and it's a it's a real-world use case. So again, I need to get them actually on this channel and, and ask them exactly how it works because it looks pretty cool how they do those things. And hopefully, uh, if they're using the blockchain, they can you know eliminate some of the middlemen, and they can actually uh, pass those savings on to the consumer. And that sounds pretty cool. But again, I need to get them on there and ask exactly how it is. But this is just real world cases. And it's interesting that they're using Ethereum 
and they're using it again on the blockchain, ERC20 tokens. So I like to see that. I like to see where the industry is going. And this is actually a fantastic use of cryptocurrency and blockchain. All right, so that's it. So thanks for sticking with me through the whole video. I really appreciate it. If you're looking for an alternative to Coinbase or any kind of wallet that you have, I have my ex exchange and, and wallet fees and just an overview of all the things that I use, have used, and will not use. And it goes through everything as far as like, um, you know what the fees are and any kind of interest that you you gain just by having it on the uh, network itself so just so you know uh, my one two three punch as I call it now is uh, Kraken Celsius and Voyager I love all three of them uh, Kraken's where I buy a lot of the things but just be aware that you can't take all the uh, uh, crypto off there uh, so that's one of their problems that they're trying to fix Celsius I love them because they have an incredible amount of interest and it's a, a wide plethora of different cryptocurrencies or assets that you, you can gain from so I have actually 30% and growing of my entire portfolio on Celsius and I get paid every single week and it's fantastic Kraken of course they got the banking license so I can't wait till they get everything going but also I like to buy a Cardano on Kraken and then I've got everything from, and this is all the reviews, Gemini, Gemini Pro, Binance, Abra App, SimpleSwap, Uniswap, SwiftX. If you don't know SwiftX and you're Australia, you got to check them out. You get your own uh, manager, account manager, for when you sign up. So it's not like Coinbase where good luck finding any kind of, um, you know, customer service. In SwiftX, it's already built in. And from what I've seen, all the reviews, fantastic. So I just have them right there. And then I Cash App, eToro, don't recommend them, and Crypto.com. So again if you want to check that out there's going to be a link in the description it looks just like this just click on that and it'll take you to this spreadsheet and just so you know on the very top these are affiliate links so if you use those you get between 10 and 25 bucks for signing up you don't have to use them you can go right to uh, kraken you can go right to uphold or ab or whatever else totally up to you whatever you want to do all right that's it if you like those videos videos gonna be two more it's going to pop up on your left and right uh, check those out let youtube uh, deal with that and that is all for today. So thanks so much. I really appreciate it. See you on the next one.